Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. This week, we talked to 22 clean energy CEOs, investors, and entrepreneurs to find out what it would take for Canada to become a clean energy superpower. Currently, Canada's clean tech sector taps into only 1% of the $1 trillion global clean technology industry. We talked to 22 of Canada's leading clean energy entrepreneurs, academics, and executives to get their take on what we need to do to take advantage of the coming clean energy transition. Investors like Nick Parker of the Clean Tech Group know the importance of this issue. I find it difficult to not be acerbic or negative when it comes to how Canada ranks in the clean energy uh, uh, race. I call it a race because it is a race. Um, it's a race in two senses of the word. One, it's a race against time vis-a-vis -vis climate change. And two, it's a race vis-a-vis uh, -vis the competition to create the jobs and the wealth that come with being part of the, the solution. While Canada might have a small population base, it's actually the sixth largest electricity generation market in the world, just behind Germany. However, Germany is able to set energy priorities at the national, not provincial level. It's not just provincial fractionalization that affects Canada, it's the need to level the playing field by accounting for the health and environmental costs of fossil fuels. Dan Balaban develops wind projects in Alberta, and he's seen firsthand what happens when governments take action to level the playing field for green energy. He was able to build a 150 megawatt wind project with the help of renewable energy credits, not from Alberta, but from California. Federal government uh, should be very clear that we favor clean sources of energy in this country to traditional sources of energy. The most common solution to stimulate clean energy development from nearly all of our interviewees was putting a price on carbon. As Andrew Heinzman sees it, a carbon price would level the playing field for clean energy entrepreneurs. The first barrier that clean energy entrepreneurs are facing is uh, the costing of externalities. You know, it, 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 so uh, the fact that their competitive sources of energy uh, are uh, priced low, uh, unfairly low, because they don't have to account for uh, you know, climate effects and health effects, and, and those. so that, that's that's the biggest one in my view. And I and, and you know, I'm a huge advocate of of um, you know carbon price. I just think it, it makes eminent sense, economic and, and ecological sense. Um, so that that you know that that to me is the biggest barrier. It's hard to compete when your when your competitors are being subsidized basically uh, by society. Andrew Heinzman is the president and founder of Investico Capital, Canada's first environmental investment company. Tom Rand is a managing partner with the Mars Clean Tech Fund, and he knows his way around the financial world. To him, the power of a price on carbon goes far beyond the money it would raise. A price on carbon is about market pull. It's about creating demand in that jurisdiction for low carbon infrastructure. It's about changing the investing climate for large scale energy infrastructure. Whereas building a clean tech company, risk capital, is about bringing technology to market, and you, or may, not, you, or may, you may or may not have a domestic market for that technology, in which case you, your market is somewhere else. So they're distinct. If the rest of the world goes low carbon, Canada will have a, a, a perfectly healthy clean tech sector because we'll sell to all the other countries who are getting on with the work of mitigating their carbon. Uh, a price on carbon is really about changing the movement of large scale flows of capital. And I think what it really does is it changes the position of the big pension and insurance funds mm -hmm. who are sitting on this, this is a global problem, right? That are sitting on trillions of dollars of capital that is seeking an investment home long term with minimal carbon risk. And as soon as the signal is placed, I think that, that those funds will flow. Uh, they're willing to do it, they've got the funds, they understand it, but they need that market signal. David Demers is CEO at Westport Innovations. It's a global leader in the manufacturing and design of automotive natural gas engines. He thinks Canada's clean energy entrepreneurs are world class, but a secret to most of us in Canada. It's clear Canada's developed over the past decade a good global reputation as a, as a green innovator. Um, which comes as a huge surprise to a lot of Canadians. But if you go to China or India or Europe, uh, Canada is recognized as a, a, a green innovator. With over 700 clean tech companies in Canada, 
a good reputation, and are considerable renewable energy resources, these entrepreneurs think Canada can become a clean energy superpower. According to folks in the industry that we interviewed, Canada needs to coordinate its efforts through a national sustainable energy strategy, and it needs to create a level playing field by putting a price on carbon. After that, the interviewees focused on financial instruments, ways for these entrepreneurs to access capital. It's a real challenge in the current environment. For more information on these instruments and for more interviews with clean energy leaders, head on down to greenenergyfutures.ca. We'd love to hear from you on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks for watching Green Energy Futures. I'm David Dodge.